Well, the uh, another little pond pump that I bought kind of burned out. I think I let it run dry once too many times and it burned the motor out. It's this kind of little pump right here. If you guys, any of you guys have these kinds of panels, these are, I shouldn't have not down, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have put these panels down before because they these are these have been lasting me. I mean, they're I put them away in the winter time. I learned that from my first set of those Harbor Freights that were the steel framed ones. That leaving them out all the time in the winter through ice and heavy rain and all that and snow and freezing thawing and all that kind of degraded them. It actually the water got in the edges got in and around the edges and it got in between the glass and the and the material that's on their galenium uh, copper arsenide or whatever that is galenium <coughs> so that's that pump there it was like it was like twenty six dollars I think what I did is I have it hooked up to get in the way of the sun here so I just bought some of this hose here at Home Depot I think it's a half inch flexible and I put a uh, hopefully I, won't be on it. I made a little filter with it so that the water will go in without getting any debris in it so what I did is I took one of these containers and punched a bunch of holes in it and I put a rock on the bottom so it sinks but that oh, there it goes what it'll do is it'll So it'll fill up with water, it'll suck it back up there. There, come on. Come on, come on. And that's the problem, it runs dry like that, it'll... I might put a switch here so I can just turn it off. That happens. Yeah, it's very watertight so I can submerge this. Let's put it underwater here like that. Turn this thing back on. But I really need to set up a thing so it won't look at least more stable here. You get what I'm doing. So any kind of little debris that gets in there it'll it'll stop that and it'll run it dry, it'll dry run it and that's what that's what happened before um, so and these come with these pigtails so they all they all join together there in the in those pigtails there and i know they're not i know it's not the best way of having these on the ground i used to have them up there i had them up there before but i'm, I'm doing a test run here and just seeing and then i can get it all set up to where it's more planned because some people they are unplanned people they kind of just like they're not planned to show up here on this planet their parents kind of just they have a whoops and they have a baby and that was me I was a whoops baby so what I've been doing here this year is I've been growing potatoes planned potatoes and I have some strawberries and strawberries are these are third or fourth generation, so they're not doing really well. Eh, my cherries are doing okay. These, this cherry tree is doing all right. I don't seem to be getting as many ants um, as I was last year. I tried putting some diametaceous earth around the base of the tree to keep the ants. But as you can see, it's still, I still get the bad cherries. They shrivel up. A lot of them shrivel up. And I get the leaf curl on the end here of the leaf. Other than that, I'm getting more cherries than I did last year. I think what happened was it dry, it was drier um, May, April and May when the flower when it was flowering, so it didn't rain as much, and we, we we were able to retain a lot of the blooms. So I got blooms fertilized. This tree I'm getting pear apples because I pruned it back the year before. Uh, the year before last it got real heavy and the branches broke so I had to cut the branch I had to make the, the limbs more stubby so they could take the weight of the fruit if I ever had a 
a bumper crop and I did have too many and it weighted it down and it broke broke the main big branch off here I think yeah there it was it broke that off so you don't want to have too much fruit you can see the but I think what happens is um, because I have so many bird feeders I'm thinking the birds come out and they eat the bugs they eat the bugs on the on the fruit so that's doing okay I still have the I'm growing potatoes in this pool here it's my potato pool my planned I'm, I'm doing a planned potato pool so an unplanned person and then this doing some more um I still haven't set those up those are brand new there's um six of them they're 100 watts each see nice thing about those is you just have one panel it's 100 watts I could just plug one of those in and I could run that pond off of one of those probably have more than enough power um what else was I doing this year in here and it was different uh, solar system still works still look, works like a champion like it like the day I set it up I think I'm not quite getting as much power as I was when I first set it up you can see I'm running the I'm um, doing a test load on it uh, it's, a indi it's indicative of how many amps I'm getting right now uh, and I run this, this Harbor Freight heat gun and somebody mentioned, you know, I think people don't like it if your videos get a lot of views. I think they, they resent you or they get jealous or something because they're all like, if you have a lot of views and they're really critical of you. And like, okay, I had a, I had a power strip here with a heater plugged into it. And it's like, okay, if I lose power in the middle of winter, you know, I'll plug it in and I'm going to be here. I'm not leaving my, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving it unattended. So the thing is, I'm running a 1500 watt heater. That's rated maximum 1500 watts. All of the, all of this, the plug and everything is, it's all UL 1500 watts, um, or, or, what is it, 15 amps? I don't think you can go over 15 amps. This won't, this won't go over 15 amps. At most, that heater I have it on 500, uh, 500 watts never I never put it on 1500 watts when I'm running it off this so and it's still this thing's still they'll still humming along I leave it on all the time and I have this um charger come on at night I have a this thing is a uh, photo cell it'll actually when it gets dark it'll turn on Let's see it comes on here if I put my finger over it Yeah, it came on. Oh, the light will come on. This little cell. So that keeps the batteries charged at night. So I know I'm getting more life out of these batteries. That, those batteries have been the oldest batteries from 2007. On the ends over there. And it still runs like a champ. I mean, I still still power when I need it. I run my... You know what I like to use it for? It's running lawn equipment. Gardening equipment leaf blowers and then uh, and my weed whacker and and there and that sort of stuff so that tells me oh, bringing in uh, 40 amps and the voltage drops down here yeah I'm getting this not showing up very well is it so I get 12 point uh, 12.25 volts on uh, 60 percent battery capacity right now running a little over 60 percent I got 40 amps coming in so it's my I'm using this heat gun uh, maximum setting here. And I keep my battery chargers on there and I bought that little air compressor those are little those are pretty nice to have putting uh, staples and nails small nails in There's my cat shadow shadow kitty and I like to leave the uh, long weeds up until um, when the flowers start dying and everything dries out then I'll mow it down because I like the I like wild flowers and um, then I have this little pool this is good for a bird bath it's got a hole in it so I think this year I'll fill it with dirt or next year and use it as a potato 
Throw potatoes in. And get some roses. Roses are red. Over here, it's not kind of not being used to store my hoses in there. And then my berry bushes back here. These are these are like volunteers. Actually, so came right out of the ground. These, these Himalayan blackberries are also known as thornless blackberries. Came up away from the pot. So they'll send a runner out. Runner will, runner will touch the ground. And then it'll grow a new new plant from the edge of, end of the runner. Like there, and it did that here too. That's a new, that's new growth. Himalayan blackberries. And these, these are boysenberries. These other ones, these thorny ones, are boys and berries. I ain't got a bunch of firewood. I gotta cut. That's my old pond. Took my old pond liner. I'm covering firewood with it. I gotta cut that. I have my electric chainsaw. I can use. Cut that up. Neighbor wanted the tree cut down so he could see. He could see my yard. He didn't like privacy, so he wanted the trees cut. So, anyhow, if people like to have their yard, don't want trees in their yard, whatever. I'm getting some wild berries over here. Wild berries. Fruiting. The birds. I don't know what kind of berries those are. But they, they grow wild around here. The birds eat them. I got this tank here, fills up when it rains. And I use it to fill the pond. I turn this on and it will drip, drip into the pond. And the raccoons come and they do stuff out here at night. Like the raccoon, he keeps coming out and pulling this air bubbler up. They keep coming out every morning and that air bubbler's laying on the ground the end of the hose is sitting out here because the air they do they like they're, they're mischief makers those raccoons i got my hummingbird feeder got another hummingbird feeder over there uh, i got what else did i get oh the harbor freight table i still have to put that together it's pretty neat. These uh, it plays off a USB stick. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, if I play it, I'll be a copyright violation if I play anything. So, but it'll play music all day long, all night. You can leave that on 24/7. It's and it has. You put the CD in there, and then you put your USB stick in there, and there's a record, and it'll record your. It'll transfer the. CD music onto a USB stick as MP3 file. The only only downside to this unit is that it formats this. So once you put an once you put something on there, you have to use this to unformat it to be able to use it, reuse it, reuse your USB stick or something else. Otherwise, you're that that's pretty much like it. It's right protected on there. You can't even erase a you can't erase format that on a computer. You got to format it on this unit. So, um, the old bicycles, my wife and I used to ride those around. I, this area really isn't really bicycle friendly. It's kind of like there's the road and then there's the edge of the road. So, I don't really ride my bike too much around here. Anyhow, that's my, um, stand of my summer. I'll show you my pear trees. Pears, how they're doing. And then I have these lilac bushes that are, every year they fill in really nice. Oh, raspberries. Getting good, getting a good raspberry crop this year. I have blueberries. This this, tr this bush is exceptionally done well this year. Usually I don't hardly get any berries on this one, and I got a lot of berries this year. And this one, average that one nothing. This one hardly any berries. So I get these trees that grow up on their own. Got to cut them down. I don't know what these are. I might be. They might be apple trees. But I don't never seen blooms on them. 
one I did see a bloom on was this one here. This one had a bloom. This one here, right here. This apple tree. Wild apple. Had a bloom right there in the end. It was spring. I don't see any fruit though. Sure. So whatever that is. It's an apple. This one, uh, rescue pears. Getting a few, quite a few this year on here, but the leaves aren't really, not healthy looking leaves. On this rescue pear this year. But my Bartlett pear is doing really well. I got a lot of fruit on it this year. Pretty heavy. I might have to pick some off because it's pretty heavy on there. Yeah. So you will see me in the future. Remember, always think safety first.